So hearty welcome dear devotees. Uh, thank you all very much for coming to this uh, wonderful festival, Nityananda Prabhu's Appearance Day. It's either the first festival of the year or the last festival of the year, depending on whether you're following the Western calendar or our Gaudiya Vaishnav calendar, which of course begins with Lord Chaitanya's appearance, Gaur Purnima, each year. Either way, very auspicious. Uh, wonderful, wonderful occasion, full of mercy, and so nice to see everyone here. We have a nice choice, if we like, a bit of shade, like uh, millions of moons cooling, uh, which is described as uh, Nityananda Prabhu's lotus feet, uh, or if we want the sunshine, uh, delightful occasion. Uh, one verse is there like that. Vande Sri Krishna Chaitanya. Nityananda Sahodito, Goldadaya Pushpabantu, Chitro Sandu Tamonudo. I offer my repeated respectful obeisances under the lotus feet uh, of Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda, who are just like the sun and the moon. They have arisen simultaneously on the horizon of Goldadesh to dissipate the darkness of ignorance and thus wonderfully bestow benediction upon all. So we heard a wonderful class uh, earlier on this morning here at New Govardhan, everyone, from Her Grace uh, Ambika Devi Dasi. All I'm going to be doing is uh, chewing remnants of foodstuffs left by her in the form of, uh, yes, these wonderful pastimes and uh, the advent of Lord Nityananda Prabhu. Um, and uh, for those of you who weren't here, we will tell some of the famous pastimes that she told this morning and a little bit of the biography of uh, Lord Nityananda. Oma jnana timanandasya gananjana shalakaya chakshu unmilitam jena tasmai sri guru bhai namaha. So um, we will begin by uh, just explaining as Ambika did very very nicely that uh, Lord Nityananda was a little bit older than Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, around 12 or 13 years older. He appeared either in the year 1473 or 1474, makes him about 12 years older uh, than Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, which is appropriate because he is the incarnation of Lord Balaram, Krishna's older brother. And uh, he appeared in uh, the very sacred village of Ekachakra, which um, is a little bit distant, about four hours' drive from our Mayapur Chandradaya Mandir. You can give me that, thank you. I need all the mercy I can get. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Um, so Ekachakra is um, a very ancient village, and uh, the Pandavas and uh, their mother Kunti Devi and wife Draupadi, they actually resided there 5,000 years ago. And uh, Nityananda Prabhu's parents, uh, the greatly fortunate Harai Pandit and Padmavati Devi, uh, they were coming in a long line of very aristocratic Brahmins, originally from Mithila, very uh, ancient uh, seat of Brahminical culture in India. And uh, Nityananda Prabhu appeared as their son, um, as Ambika was saying, on the 13th day of the waxing moon in the month of Mag. And uh, the Lord spent the first 12 years approximately of his life there in Ekachakra. And uh, he was the natural leader of all uh, the children there. And. Uh, he performed many wonderful pastimes from the earliest age, uh, always centered around Krishna and Balaram's pastimes, but also he would perform the pastimes of all of the other avatars of the Supreme Lord, uh, Lord Vamanadev, Lord Narasimhadev, Lord Baraha, all of the uh, prominent avatars of Krishna and Balaram. And when the elderly people of Ekachakra would, would, would ask him, uh, my dear child, how it is that uh, you know all of these pastimes? Um, he would smile, a beautific smile, and say, but these are all my eternal pastimes, and I'm just sharing them with you. So uh, 
He uh, absolutely charmed all of the residents of uh, Eka Chakra and uh, performed these wonderful pastimes up until the approximately the age of 12, when a very mysterious sannyasi came to Eka Chakra and was, uh, was hosted in the house of Hadai Pandit and uh, Padmavati and uh, spent the whole evening uh, delighting them with uh, wonderful Krishna Kata. Uh, but in the morning, the sannyasi uh, asked a favor uh, of Hadai Pandit and Padmavati. Uh, he said he needed one uh, brahmachari assistant to travel with him. And he would take him to uh, all of the holy places all over India. And that uh, brahmachari assistant was none other than their beloved son, uh, Nityananda. Said when Nityananda Prabhu appeared, uh, his parents couldn't decide whether to call him Nityananda or Rama. So they called him both names, Nityananda Ram. So of course this was, uh, this was like a thunderbolt to the hearts of Hadai Pandit and Padmavati. But they'd given their word to the sannyasi. And very reluctantly, um, Nityananda left, and it said he didn't look back. He, uh, this was his, the Lord's own, his own transcendental arrangement, because he knew that um, his uh, worshipable Lord and younger brother, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, had uh, recently advented, and at some point in the future the two of them will inaugurate the Harinam Sankirtan movement. So this was his, the Lord's arrangement uh, to leave home and to visit all the holy places which he did for many years. Uh, wonderful travels which are described uh, throughout Chaitanya Bhagavat and uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita, visiting all holy places throughout India. And uh, during that time, he met uh, the great, greatly fortunate Lakshmi Patitirtha, who he accepted as his initiating spiritual master. And he also associated with uh, Madhavindra Puri. And uh, they had wonderful uh, pastimes together for many days. They both saw one another and realized uh, that neither had seen another personality who had such love for Krishna previously. So there were wonderful pastimes, uh, kirtan and uh, sharing of realizations. That event took place in the western side of India, the meeting of Madhavendra Puri and uh, Lord Nityananda. Nityananda in his early life uh, lived as a brahmachari, uh, avaduta. The word Avaduta, one, one definition is most free. So Nityananda Prabhu wandered uh, fr carefree uh, in his early life uh, as an Avaduta. And uh, of course, sadly, the separation, just as it was for King Dasarath and Koshalya, when Lord Ramachandra went to the forest for 14 years exile, a few months after uh, Lord Nityananda left home, uh, both his parents, Hadai Pandit and Padmavati, left this world, went back to home, back to Godhead. So it's, and of course, Nityananda Prabhu traveled, um, visited all these major holy places throughout India. And uh, Around the time that Mahaprabhu returned from Goya after taking initiation from Srila Ishwara Puri, uh, he, at that point, Mahaprabhu um, stopped his scholarly pastimes and manifested uh, his full-blown uh, divine pastimes as uh, a great uh, lover of Krishna. And at that time, uh, Nityananda Prabhu who was residing in Brindavan and uh, associating with uh, the cowherd boys there and the cows and um, not often was so absorbed in love of Godhead that he was completely uh, oblivious to external consciousness. He wasn't even bothering very often to eat and uh, occasionally someone would offer him uh, some milk and he would drink that in this way he was... Uh, 
enjoying all sorts of uh, blissful pastimes in Vrindavan as, uh, as Balaramji. So um, around that time, uh, Nityananda Prabhu uh, intuitively knew that Goranga Mahaprabhu was starting his Sankirtan pastimes in Navadweep Mayapur. So he left Vrindavan and he traveled uh, quickly uh, down to uh, Navadweep and uh, he took shelter in the house of Nandanacharya, which is interesting. We read recently in Chaitanya Charitamrita, Nandanacharya, greatly fortunate uh, devotee, he seemed to have a house in Navadweep where when devotees wanted to be on their own, they could go and hide out there. So different devotees, so I think Advaita Acharya and even Mahaprabhu himself. So uh, that was where Lord Nityananda went um, and he spent a couple of days there and Mahaprabhu re revealed to his confidential associates uh, that he had a wonderful dream one night that uh, a divine personality had arrived in Navadweep um, and he was uh, he had appeared on a chariot and the chariot on its flag had the symbol of a palm tree so he instructed um, Haridas Thakur and Srivas Thakur, you please go door to door in Navadweep Mayapur and you find this exalted personality and you bring him here. So um, Haridas and Srivas, they spent the whole day searching, um, but they could not find this divine personality that Mahaprabhu had indicated had recently arrived. So uh, they came back and they were, um, but Mahaprabhu, he became very uh, ecstatic and uh, with Kiritan, he went immediately to the house of Nandanacharya and Lord Nityananda was waiting for him uh, on the veranda. And there was the most touching um, meeting ever imaginable between the two lords. And uh, thus began, began the, uh, the wonderful pastimes uh, of the Sankirtan movement, which have very beautifully been described by our Acharyas in their songs. And Ambika sang one of those songs this morning. And I thought, Hare Krishna, this is what happens. What is it? My bag. Ah, thank you. I'm sitting on it. Thank you so much. Is that enough? So what happens when you get old? You even forget your bag and you're sitting on it. So I thought at this point, everyone, following an Ambika's lotus footprints this morning, um, I'd like to just share with you a couple of lines from a few famous songs and Prabhupada's wonderful purports. Um, and the first one... These are the first few are from Srila Narottam Das Thakur and his book of songs Pratana. And this is Lala Samai Pratana. And I'll just read uh, the a couple of lines here. Ara Kabi Nitai Chand Karuna Hoibi Samsara Bhashana Mora Kabi Tuchahabi. So this is Prabhupada's these are Prabhupada's own words, everyone. Um, his translation to this beautiful bhajan. And regarding this line, he says, Ha aha kabe nitai chand karuna hoibe. We are all asking about the mercy of Lord Nityananda. Nityananda is supposed to be the original spiritual master. So we have to approach Gauranga, Lord Chaitanya, through the mercy of Lord Nityananda. What is the symptom of a person who has achieved the causeless mercy of Lord Nityananda? Narottam Das Thakur says that the symptom of one who has actually received the causeless mercy of Lord Nityananda is that he has no more material desire. Samsara Bhashana means desire for material enjoyment. And Narottam Das wonders when it will be, when it will become a very insignificant. Of course, as long as we have bodies, we have to accept so many material things but not in the spirit of enjoyment, but only to keep body and soul together. So next, everyone, we have another song by Narottam Das Thakur. This is Sa 
Varana Sri Golda Pade Padme Pratana. This is a very famous line. Haha Prabhu Nityananda Premananda Suki. Kripa Balo Kana Koro Ami Boro Duki. And that translates as uh, when he prays to Lord Nityananda, he says, Haha Prabhu Nityananda Premananda Suki. My dear Lord Nityananda, you are always joyful in spiritual bliss. Since you always appear very happy, I have come to you because I am most unhappy. If you kindly put your glance over me, I may also become happy. And similarly, uh, Manashiksha Bhajan, teachings to the mind, Nittai Parakamala Koti Chandra Sushitala. And that uh, nice paragraph here from Srila Prabhupada. This is a very nice song sung by Narottam Das Thakur. He advises that Nittai Pada, the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda. Kamala means lotus and Pada means feet. Are the shelter where one will get the soothing moonlight, not only of one, but of millions of moons. We can just imagine the aggregate total value of the soothing shine of millions of moons. In this material world, Jagat, which is progressing towards hell, there is always blazing fire and everyone is struggling hard without finding peace. Therefore, if the world wants to have real peace, it should take shelter under the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda, which are cooling like the shining of a million moons. Juraya means relief. If one actually wants relief from the struggle of existence and actually wants to extinguish the blazing fire of material pangs, Narottam Das Thakur advises, please take shelter of Lord Nityananda. What will be the result of accepting the shelter of the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda? He says, Heno nitai bini bai. Unless one takes shelter under the shade of the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda, Radha Krishna paiti nai. It will be very difficult for him to approach Radha Krishna. The aim of this Krishna consciousness movement is to enable us to approach Radha Krishna and associate with the Supreme Lord in his sublime pleasure dance. Narottam Das Thakur advises that if one actually wants to enter into the dancing party of Radha and Krishna, he must accept the shelter of the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda. Then he says, Se Sambanda Nahi. Sambanda means connection or contact. Anyone who has not contacted a relationship with Nityananda is understood to have spoiled his human life. So one last one here, everyone. And this... Um, there's a famous song by Srila Lochan Das Thakur. Panama Karuna Pahum Dui Jana Nitai Gaura Chandra. This is a song by Lochan Das Thakur. Pahu means Lord and Dui means two. Lochan Das Thakur declares that the two lords, Nitai Gaura Chandra, Lord Nitai and Lord Chaitanya are very merciful. Parama Karuna. Sabha uh, Avatara Sari Siromani. Avatar means incarnation and Sabha means all. They are the essence of all incarnations. Right. So, there's a wonderful pastime of Srila Prabhupada's um, in this regard, which is very famous. And uh, when Prabhupada, I think the year was 1975, and Prabhupada had done a tour of Central and South America. He visited Mexico City, Caracas, Venezuela, Miami, which I think Sula Prabhupada would sometimes pronounce Miami, and then he arrived in Atlanta, Atlanta, Atlanta Georgia. And there were such, there were hundreds of devotees there. Uh, all of the Radha Damada TSKP traveling Sankirtan buses were there, hundreds and hundreds of devotees. And uh, Prabhupada actually, and it was an arrival address at the temple. And Prabhupada explained, just as we have, uh, where he'd recently been. And then he said, um, but I see your temple is the best. To loud, loud uh, chants of Haribol and uh, Jai. And... Uh, and the presiding deities in the Atlanta Atlanta Temple uh, were um, gorgeous, large marble Gornitai deities. So Prabhupada began to um, explain uh, this this line: "Parama Karuna Pahum Dui Jana Nitai Gaura Chandra." And uh, 
explaining that they are so merciful, these two lords. Uh, they are the embodiment. They are the deluxe incarnations of Godhead, if you like. Uh, they are just so, so kind, so merciful. Uh, but at that point, after just a couple of sentences, Prabhupada's voice became choked with transcendental emotions. Tears shot from his eyes um, and uh, he could no longer continue his arrival address. And um, after a few moments, um, he said, chant Hare Krishna. And we've heard this story and we've read about it and, it's, and you can actually listen to this arrival address uh, in, in amongst all of Prabhupada's wonderful classes, arrival addresses, morning walks and so on. And we had the good fortune a few year, quite a few years ago, could even be 10 years ago now. Um, if anyone can remember this wonderful devotee's name, please just yell it out. But he came here a couple of times. Wonderful devotee um, who was traveling all over North America with the Traveling Rathiatra Festival program. Very good guitarist and songwriter. Narantara. Sorry? Narantara. Narantara? That's his name? You sure about that? I'm sure you are. Narantara. Narantara Prabhu, yes. Wonderful devotee, yeah? Used to give classes here and do uh, Nirantara. Thank you. You've got a good memory. And it's appropriate because you're Paramakaruna. Das. Very good. So, uh, Nirantara Prabhu, yes. And he was sitting right there. Do you remember this, Paramakaruna? He, um, he told us. A lot of devotees went to the airport. Some, but Nirantara Prabhu, he had a strategy. Very clever strategy. He stayed back at the temple and he got a spot right at the base of Prabhupada's Vyasa son. And he wasn't moving for anyone. Big sannyasis came, tried to move him. I'm, I'm not moving, I'm staying here. And when Prabhupada's spiritual emotions overwhelmed him and those tears shot from his eyes like water out of a syringe, Narendra Prabhu was right there and he got the tears on the head. Hoodie bowl. So... Um, this is Prabhupada's mood, and of course we've heard many other, there are many other wonderful pastimes of the mercy of Lord Nityananda Prabhu. Um, another one just in the sense of Western preaching and how Nityananda Prabhu is so kindly disposed to um, the most fallen. Um, was, and we've heard this story a couple of times from His Holiness Indra Swami and perhaps some of our Devotees here at New Gobanan were there on one Polish tour when uh, Pankajangari Prabhu was invited by Andrew Duna Maharaj. Um, as Maharaj used to do, invite his god brothers and god sisters on the Polish tour. And uh, Pankajangari Prabhu had not been out of India for some years. You know, he had a, his mountain of service there in Mayapur, and if he did need to renew his English visa to stay in India, he'd just go to Dhaka in. Uh, Bangladesh. So he'd not been out of India for some years, so uh, all of a sudden he's in Poland. And at the height of the Polish tour, and it's the Polish Woodstock. And there's more than a million young people there from all over Europe and the world. And Pankajangari Prabhu was invited uh, by Andrew Duna Maharaj to give uh, the morning Srimad Bhagavatam class, uh, perhaps the one day after he'd arrived, and there was huge Rathiyatra festival uh, up and down in the, uh, the festival grounds. So uh, Pankajangari Prabhu started, he, he, he did as much as he could, um, singing Jai Radha Madhava and about to speak on Bhagavatam, but he just became completely overwhelmed. He came, became completely choked up with spiritual emotions and explained, I, I'm just, this is just overwhelming. This is all the mercy of Lord Nityananda. And um, that was a class. He, he couldn't continue speaking. He got up off the Vyasasana, excused himself and went to his caravan. Um, so this is, of course, uh, very profound, very deep, this, this love that Nityananda Prabhu has for the fallen conditioned souls uh, is really, um, really wondrous. And we'll try and continue on a little bit here. But just wanted to take that little uh, detour and uh, see where we pick it up because we have reams of notes just as Ambika had uh, this morning. We'll just see where we come back to here. 
Uh, one thing we can mention um, is that the two great biographies, Chaitanya Charamrita and Chaitanya Bhagavad, uh, they're very, it's very important because Nityananda Prabhu has uh, very strong, very, features very, very strongly throughout both these great biographies of the Panchatattva. Uh, in the sense that we know Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami, um, Nityananda Prabhu appeared to him in a dream and ordered him to go to Vrindavan. The, uh, the events leading up to that, uh, Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami was living in his village in Bengal and he had uh, organized one Kirtan festival and invited the guest of honor was uh, Miniketan Ramdas, who was uh, one of the eternal associates of Lord Nityananda very intimate friend and servant of Lord Nityananda. So he was invited to the Kirtan festival, uh, but Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami's brother and also the Pujari worshipping the deities, they had a lot of faith in Lord Chaitanya, but they did not have the same degree of faith in Lord Nityananda. And Mini Ketan Ram, he picked up on this mood um, and he was a little offended and he left early. So, um, Krishnadas Kaviraj, later on, he chastised his brother. And for the good quality of chastising his brother, he had the dream that night where Lord Nityananda appeared and said, leave home, go to Vrindavan. There you will achieve all things. Uh, Gunanava Mishra was the name of the Pujari. So that's exactly what Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami did. And of course he describes it in the beginning of Chaitanya Charitamrita how wonderful was his vision, his dream of Lord Nityananda. Uh, he was very stout and strong uh, personality, um, blooming lotus petal eyes stretching all the way around to his ears, dressed in gorgeous dark blue silks with a big turban. He was chanting Krishna, Krishna in a very deep voice. And he had other cowherd boy associates around him also chanting Krishna, Krishna. He was carrying a, a wonderful staff. Uh, and we could describe this morning an iron staff, um, gold plated, studded with jewels. So it was such a, such a profound uh, vision that Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami had. Um, and it's said he never returned to Bengal. He spent the rest of his life uh, famously there in Vrindavan, took shelter of the Goswamis, especially Raghunath Das Goswami, who was reciting every afternoon for at least one or two or three hours the pastimes of Mahaprabhu that he had personally observed in Jagannath Puri. And again, uh, and Bika, this is going to kind of seem like an echo uh, from your class this morning. What can I, I've got all the same notes, but I'm, I've added some from your class also. But uh, Sambanda Abhide and Prayojana Acharyas, uh, Sanatan, Rupa and uh, Raghunath Das, they all uh, became intimate associates and were accepted by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu through the kindness of Lord Nityananda in different places and in different ways. And... Uh, Famous, of course, was the is and still going on to this day. And uh, any of our devotees been to the Panihati festival? Ah, Haribo! How ecstatic! I've not been, so you please uh, bless me. Perhaps one day we can get there. But uh, oh, fantastic! Mother Jesus given me blessings um, that to go some some time. That's wonderful. So even if we don't make it in this lifetime, but uh, I've heard, and you ladies know. Uh, Prabhu is better than me because you've personally attended. Wonderful festival. Um, and that, uh, of course, um, even though Raghunath Das tried many times to run away from home, uh, he was not successful. But uh, by the kindness of Lord Nityananda, who asked him to organize a wonderful festival, feed all his associates, um, which he did. Uh, and then he got the blessings. Um, Lord Nityananda placed his lotus feet on Raghunath Das's head and soon thereafter he was able to um, leave and take shelter in Jagannath Puri as was uh, Ruparan Sanatan, um, 
also were introduced to Mahaprabhu by the kindness of Lord Nityananda um, and Haridas Thakur. So I'm just going to keep one eye on the time, everyone, but we're doing pretty, pretty well here. And there is so much, uh, so much transcendental nectar. Um, and of course, uh, yes, uh, Brindavan Das Thakur, he's described as the last uh, and the favorite disciple of Lord Nityananda. And he composed the wonderful Chaitanya Bhagavad. So uh, these two great literatures we can relish throughout our lifetimes um, again and again and again. Uh, we were discussing with Krishna Kirtan the other morning. We heard this again from His Holiness Indraduna Maharaj, who some years ago now told us how he'd recently caught up with Shivaram Swami somewhere in their travels. They, uh, they were in the same place at the same time. And... Uh, Induduna Maharaj asked Shivaram Swami, uh, Shivaram Maharaj told him, uh, I've just completed my 14th complete study of Chaitanya Charamrita. So Induduna Maharaj was fascinated. Oh, that's wonderful, Maharaj. Oh, please share a realization from this latest reading. And Induduna Maharaj, uh, sorry, Shivaram Maharaj said, My realization is just how much prashada Lord Chaitanya and his associates used to honor. That's a wonderful realization. So, um, Nityananda Prabhu is described as Isha Prakash, or the cherished goal of the Gaudiya Vaishnavas. And he's also sometimes described as the... Mm, in Catholic hierarchy, we have bishops, and then above bishops... No, not the Pope. Cardinal, thank you. We have the, he is described as a cardinal of the Gaudiya Vaishnavas, Nityananda Prabhu. So, um, hmm. I will just go a little bit further on here. Um, hmm. Of course, many other wonderful songs are there. These are just a few in our Iskon song books, but any of our devotees who've lived in Bengal or Bangladesh for many years know there are literally hundreds of songs glorifying Lord Nityananda, Lord Chaitanya and their associates. Brajendra Nandanas Ye Sachi Sutta Hoyla Se Balaram Hoyla Nitai who was formerly the son of Nanda Maharaj. He has appeared as the son of Sachi Devi and Balaram is Nityananda Prabhu. And uh, again, uh, he represents uh, Guru Tattva, he's the original Guru. Um, and another interesting story because I have some revered God brethren here today. And some of you, I'm sure, will remember Giri Rupert Hari and Shaila Vasini. Okay, are we going back a while now? Yeah. And uh, they were Kiwis. Uh, this is interesting just to. Uh, Highlight the mercy of Lord Nityananda. Uh, Giri Rupert Hari Prabhu told me once how he joined the Krishna Consciousness Movement. He was a young man working in an office overlooking Queen Street in Auckland. And when the devotees went first to Auckland in the early 70s, um, like everywhere else, the devotees would go out regularly on Harinam Sankirtan during the, uh, the lunchtime period and sell back to Godhead magazines. Giri Rupert Hari Prabhu didn't like the devotees at first. Um, he was really disturbed. And uh, his mother used to uh, pack him a lunchbox every day. And in the lunchbox, there was always a piece of fruit, an apple, an orange, a kiwi fruit, a fijoa. Uh, but he didn't, Gary Rupert Harry didn't like fruit very much. So what did he do with that piece of fruit? He used to throw it at the devotees. Yeah. Um, but then, um, sometime later, he actually did get it back to Godhead magazine and read it, and he, th and he felt quite remorseful. Um, and eventually he became a devotee. So he had the realization, well, maybe Krishna just saw that I was offering fruit to the devotees, uh, whether I actually hit them with the fruit. 
So uh, I thought that's, uh, Krishna only sees the good, right? He doesn't see the bad. So that's Nongiri uh, Rupert Hari Prabhu. So um, we are going to tell, just as Ambika did this morning, we're going to tell the story of Jagai and Madhai Ambika. Because um, there is just one or two things you didn't, but there, there is unlimited. Uh, Nityananda Prabhu is Ananta Dave. He's unlimited. His glory is uh, unlimited. But actually, most of it I'm going to tell exactly verbatim. Um, but it's a wonderful, uh, it's a it's a wonderful story, um, Jagai and Madai. And there are so many others. We'll again eventually get back to them. But um, one story, of course, which uh, is also very delightful. When Lord Chaitanya and Nityananda started their going out on their daily Harinam Sankirtan. Uh, processions and also they were starting to get invited to people's homes but something was really happening in Navadweep so on one occasion the two lords were invited to one tantric sannyasi's home he wasn't really a sannyasi he was there are many different uh, uh, expansions and uh, of different Vedic traditions so anyway um, this couple invited Nityananda and Lord Chaitanya to their home and they did, did some kirtan and uh, it was quite a nice uh, program but then at one point uh, the tantric sannyasi said to the two lords um, would you like some Ananda and Mahaprabhu was thinking sure that's what we're about we're, we want some Ananda but Nityananda Prabhu had to whisper in Mahaprabhu's ear he means liquor to which Mahaprabhu was shocked and uh, Nityananda Prabhu said to the Lord I think we better get out of here so they did they jumped out the window and they ran off down the street <laughs> so um, and of course Jagai and Madai uh, were born in very respectable Brahmin families and as we know um, Jai and Vijay were cursed to take births in the material world Hiranyaksha and Hiranyakashipu, uh, Ravana and Kumbhakana, Shishupal and Dantaravakra. But it appears, um, according to Vrindavan Das Thakur, that they didn't want to miss out on the pastimes of the two lords coming again at the start of Kali Yuga. So they appeared as Jagai and Marai. And yes, they were um, very degraded fellows, even though they had been born in Brahmin families. They completely given up their uh, Brahminical practices, uh, become drunkards, and uh, all manner of um, very nasty activities they had committed. So, um, and one of the first Sankirtan parties uh, to go out, if you like, was uh, Nityananda and Haridas. And they would go out every day, door to door, and Bika described so beautifully this morning um, how they would literally beg the household as you please chant the name of Krishna um, you worship Krishna you try to imbibe Krishna's teachings into your life and uh, Nityananda would get down on his bended knees and literally beg with tears in his eyes uh, was heart melting uh, so and of course many people would do that um, but some would not and uh, it's also interesting to note that Nityananda Prabhu never started his preaching until he got the order of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu he is supreme personality of servant to Godhead so even after traveling uh, for many years throughout the subcontinent of India it was only when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ordered him that he took up um, the preaching mood and uh, it's also said the day that he knew Mahaprabhu had made his advent in this world, Nityananda Prabhu, he shouted with joy. Um, so, on one of the one of their preaching uh, days, um, adventures, they um, they came to the to to the end of one street but a little bit at the end of the street kind of like a dead end street there they could see some commotion going on um, and 
they are some of the local people um, who, uh, who, what's going on over there? And the local people said, oh, you really don't want to go over there. That's, that's, they're, that's Jagai and Mudo. They're really degraded fellows. Um, please don't, uh, please don't go anywhere near them. Uh, your lives will be in, in severe threat. So, um, but Nityananda Prabhu, he felt that um, in order for Lord Chaitanya to be really known as Patita Pavana or the deliverer of the most fallen, they had to at least approach and beg these two uh, retrobrates to, to at least try and chant Hare Krishna. So, um, but Namacharya uh, Haridas, he was not so keen, a little older and wiser, you could say, Nityananda again in his mood as an Abadut. Um, not following any social conventions whatsoever. So um, it's said that uh, even though uh, Jagai and Madai had committed so many atrocious crimes, their one good quality, if they had any at all, saving grace, was they never uh, offended Vaishnavas because they never associated with Vaishnavas and Vaishnavas didn't want to associate with them. So uh, the two approached and of course uh, they were in a drunken stupor and were full of anger. Um, it said that Jagai and Madai, if they didn't have anyone else to fight with, they would just fight with each other, pulling one another's hair, punching each other, wrestling like that. So they uh, took great offense uh, to these two saintly personalities asking them to chant Krishna's name um, and uh, and so and they actually started chasing uh, Lord Nityananda and Haridas down the street. But Jagai and Madai were grossly uh, overweight and unfit, and um, there was a wonderful mock fight between Lord Nityananda and Haridas Thakur as they were running with uh, Jagai and Madai on their heels. Uh, first of all, uh, Lord. Lord Nityananda suggested to Haridas, maybe you can get us out of this situation because you were beaten in 22 marketplaces and you survived, so you must have some special mercy from Krishna. So please, you, uh, you extricate us from this uh, precarious situation. And um, Haridas responded by saying, well, this is all your fault. You got us into this. Uh, the local people said not to approach, but you insisted, no, let's go and approach. So here we are. And Nityananda Prabhu, he responded, well, I'm a drunkard and I like to associate with other drunkards. It's not my fault. So, um, of course, uh, Nityananda Prabhu's uh, drunkenness is an intoxicated state, intoxicated state of love of Godhead. Um, so somehow or other they escaped and uh, they gave their report that evening to Lord Chaitanya. And it's said in the next day or two, Nityananda and Lord Chaitanya was, uh, of course, uh, sad to hear that these two seemed to have escaped uh, the mercy that he wanted to give and Lord Nityananda wanted to give. But in the next day or so, Nityananda was uh, passing by that same part of Navadweep. And he thought, let me just try again. Let me just go and see Jagai and Madai. Um, and of course, again, the two were not receptive. And it was Jagai who struck Lord Nityananda on the forehead uh, with a used uh, liquor pot, clay pot, drawing blood, significant amount of blood, uh, pouring down the face of Lord Nityananda and staining his cloth. And, uh, of course, at that point, some of the local people witnessing this ghastly scene ran back to Mahaprabhu's house, informed the Lord what was happening. Mahaprabhu ran there immediately. As he drew closer, he shouted out, Chakra! Chakra! And the Lord invoked his Sudarshan Chakra to immediately uh, dispatch the two sinners. But uh, Nityananda Prabhu, he interceded on their behalf and of course, Jagai and Madai, seeing Mahaprabhu um, in this uh, feature of uh, transcendental anger, immediately threw themselves um, at the feet of the Lord and begged forgiveness. And uh, 
So, but Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wasn't easily convinced, but then um, Nityananda Prabhu, he did uh, beg Mahaprabhu, if you're going to kill these two, you might as well kill it, practically everyone in Kali Yuga. Because everyone practically in this degraded age is as sinful as Jagain Madai. So Mahaprabhu uh, relented. And it's quite profound because uh, at that point, he uh, actually invited the two who had a, a major epiphany and completely changed their consciousness. And it's said that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu actually invited the Jagayan Madai back to his own home. And uh, he even embraced uh, Madai. And um, of course, even before that, before they went back to the Lord's house, um, Mahaprabhu was going to chastise one, but not the other, because Madai actually interceded. Jagai was going to hit Lord Nityananda a second time, but it was Madai who grabbed his hand and said, No, no, don't. Uh, don't do this. So um, it appeared that uh, Mahaprabhu was going to chastise Jagai, but not Madai. But then Jagai said, well, 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 everything I've done, he's done. Yeah. And everything he's done, I've done. So Mahaprabhu agreed to forgive both of them, provided they vowed never to go back to their sinful ways and henceforward to become devotees of Krishna. So back at the Lord's house, he, um, and of course, Sachi Mata and uh, Vishnu Priya were quite shocked. He is uh, near my pundit with these two uh, quite uh, ghastly looking fellows. And it's said that, uh, and please forgive me if I get Jago and Mata mixed up because it's pretty easy to do. But I think Mahaprabhu in, uh, actually embraced Mata. And uh, at that point, uh, Lord Chaitanya's body turned completely black, jet black. And Mahaprabhu asked Advaita Acharya, who'd come there also, what do I look like? And Advaita Acharya said, you look, you look just like Sham Sunda, Krishna. So, um, and Mahaprabhu at that point accepted all of the sinful reactions of Jagai and Madai and he said in future um, these reactions um, they will be passed on they will be passed on to um, persons who offend Vaishnavas so uh, a timely reminder not to uh, ever forget Vaishnavas all right, um, I've got a notice here, everyone. Um, at 11.25, we're going to have a deity procession out of the temple. Deity's coming back um, for a gift opening. Um, and it's not too late to buy gifts. Uh, this is what the notice says from the gift shop. So that's, uh, that's happening at 11.25. So I've only got a few minutes, everybody. And at uh, 12 o'clock, uh, the Aarti will be here um, uh, outside after the deities come out and have their gift opening. So in the brief four minutes that I, oh, I actually have yeah, four minutes, um, just like to, yeah, just try and, I think we've covered that. Oh, we might as well finish. Madai built a bathing gap. Um, because a day or so after, he was still feeling very remorseful, Madai. So we asked Lord Nityananda, actually Lord Nityananda sought him out um, and he, he said he was still feeling just so remorseful and, and uh, miserable for all of the sinful activities he performed during his lifetime. And Nityananda Prabhu advised him, instructed him, um, you build a gap, you get a small shovel and with your own hands you build a bathing gap so all of the residents of Navadweep and any pilgrims, uh, they can easily access Mother Ganga. And you also beg forgiveness from all of the, uh, the, the persons there in Navadweep. It's said that sometimes some people were still so angry with Jagai and Madai that they would still throw rocks at them 
when they came to the bathing gate. And some of those rocks used to hit Mudai in the head. And he used to pick up the rock and give it back to the person who just thrown it and say, throw it again. He was so, um, so remorseful. Um, so, of course, Nityananda Prabhu was there at many famous uh, events, uh, the sannyas of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Katwa. And uh, again, and I did write this one down, Ambika, he broke the dunder of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Um, uh, as well, uh, just on the outskirts of uh, Jagannath Puri, he accompanied Lord Chaitanya there to Jagannath Puri. And, um, and many, many other wonderful pastimes as well. And uh, the Lord who I carry, this is what Nityananda Prabhu said about the breaking of the staff, the Lord who I carry in my heart carries you. Um, so for that reason, Nityananda Prabhu had scant regard for the Ekadanda of Lord Chaitanya. The Lord who I carry in my heart carries you, so I'm breaking you. Um, and he did that. I haven't heard that before, Ambika, so thanks for sharing that this morning. Very nice. Um, so, let me just see here. We could say so much, as Ambika already has. How many minutes? Oh, we've got one minute. Hare Krishna. Uh, Vashuddha and Janava, uh, none other than Varuni and Rebati, the two uh, consorts of Lord Balaram. Um, and uh, Ganga Muni, or just Ganga, uh, the daughter. Uh, the two children um, were, we have our Virabhadra Prabhu here today, and um, the son, Virabhadra Prabhu, who is in the category of Vishnu Tattva, uh, Shuridakshaya Vishnu, and also accepted as an expansion of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself, and uh, their daughter, Vashuddha, gave birth to both children, said that Vashuddha actually passed away quite young, and that... Um, Janava Mata actually uh, raised the children for a good part of their life. And of course, Virabhadra Prabhu took initiation from his mother, um, Janava, a little bit later on in life. Janava Mata um, is described as a leader, preacher, acharya, mother, and excellent cook. And Prabhupada could trace his own family lineage back um, to. That place in Bo Bengal, uh, Saptagram, where um, Udarana Datta Thakur originated, Prabhupada's father, Gormahande, would take the children there sometimes. Uh, one of the most aristocratic uh, families in the whole of Bengal, the Days, the Sills and the Muluks, all uh, came from uh, Saptagram. Um, they were formerly gold merchants, Suvanam Vaniks. And uh, so that was Prabhupada's wonderful uh, family lineage coming down from there. So we've, we've hit our time schedule, everyone. Um, where is Premanjali? Premanjali, uh, we've got more, but I think we're right on time here. So I think the deities maybe are going to uh, come out. Uh, all right, everyone. So we'll stop there. Jai Sri Nityananda Ram Ki. Nityananda Trayodasi Ki. Gora Premanandi. Hare Krishna.